In this video, I'm going to show you my three favorite hidden features in FabFilter Pro L. I haven't seen anybody talk about these features, and they are by far my favorite part of FabFilter's plugin design. I have a track here today by a band called In Your Memory. They're dropping a lot of new music out. I'm really excited to be working with these guys. Just give you a little sample. <laughs> Now let's talk about FabFilter. I think some of the most important things to consider when mastering is to one, not use your eyes when you're mastering. Okay, a lot of limiters have peaks on them, they show gain reduction. FabFilter, we can turn that crap off. So this little button right here, we can take out all of that input signal. Now we're not being misled, okay? However, you start pushing this gain up, We can see the red here, okay, that's the gain reduction. We can also disable the meter. This is my second favorite thing. So now this plugin is set up so that we are literally flying blind, okay? All the decisions we have to make for our final limiter is based on our ears. We get no information from any meters. That is so important, okay? Now, the last step is to just ride this fader up, okay? We're gonna increase the gain and try to listen for where we're losing that transient response. Where's the, where's the punch going away? Are we getting distortion in the kick drum? The problem with this is that as you increase that gain, you're gonna be tricking yourself into thinking it sounds better. It's a totally normal human phenomenon to think that what's louder is better, okay? However, FabFilter has this awesome trick, which I had no idea about. I'm so glad I found out about it because it's been helping me make more objective decisions on mixing and mastering. And all you have to do is hold down the Alt key and then push the fader up. And if we look, the output gain is perfectly compensated for how much we're pushing it up. What that means is that we're gonna be driving the level into this limiter and it's decreasing the output volume at the same rate so that we're only hearing changes to the audio without it increasing in volume. That is huge because now we can listen and we'll be able to pick out when that distortion is happening. We're gonna be able to pick out when we lose that transient punch. It's so important, especially in mastering, that we don't screw this last step up, okay? So let's listen to the music, and I'm just gonna show you how much better it is that we have this ability to offset this gain. Okay, here we go. All right, alt is held down, we're driving the gain up. Listen for the distortion. You hear that? It's breaking up. Right here, the kick drum is still kind of floppy. Right here, I think we're okay. So I would say, you know, right around this area, we're still getting some good transient punch, and I don't hear a lot of noticeable distortion. Let's go to the loud part again. Right here. Perfect, okay? Now that we've made a decision on what we're going to be setting the limiter to, let's activate those meters and see how much gain we're actually attenuating. And who knows? Maybe it'll be crazy big. Maybe it won't be that much. I don't know. Let's find out. What do you know? It's like a dB and a half. This is the secret. Do that on every single master. Make sure you're compensating for the gain on the output as you're driving it up, and you're gonna make so much better decisions on everything you do. I have links to this plugin in the description, so check that out. And if you like this kind of stuff, please hit that subscribe button. You're gonna get notified when I put a new video up every single week, and I put a lot of effort into these to make sure that I'm teaching you stuff that you can take back to your home studio and make better sounding music. So with that, I'll catch you guys in the next video.